Welcome back. We now continue our focus on the two-part retirement system, which officially kicks off tomorrow. Well, this uh, conversation is in partnership with Sunlam. The retirement reform essentially aims to balance the need for immediate emergency financial relief with the importance of long-term savings. It will help avoid the drastic step of resigning from a job by allowing workers to access some of their retirement savings when they need it while still employed. It ensures that while some of the savings can be used for emergencies, the rest remains protected for the future. While well, Johanna Prinsloo, Sunlam Corporate Head of Retirement Fund Administration Services, joins us now to help unpack the practical implications of the two-part system. Johan, a very good afternoon to you. Understandably, of course, there are still a lot of questions around the two-part system. A lot of it driven by uncertainty as well as concern. I mean, we have a, a few questions from our viewers I'd like us to listen to. I'd like us to then listen to the first question and then you can respond accordingly. And of course, good afternoon to you. Hello, Anati. Uh, thanks for having me and uh, good afternoon to our viewers. Let's take the questions. Perfect. And I work for the Law Society of South Africa. I'm the General Secretary of the Law Society of South Africa. Uh, okay, my questions. My first question. Um, okay, we got two parts. What will benefit me more? Must I take it or not take it? That's my first question. My second question. If you started working, maybe last year, you started having your benefits last year, where do I benefit? Do I still have the savings, the retirement? Because I know there's three pots or this summer. Yeah, that's my second question. Uh, my third question, um, if I go for, like now I'm 24, when I retire at 60, if I take my pot, uh, uh, the 30,000 or whatever, they said I can take now. The time when I retire, will I have money still? Johan, again, as I said, still a lot of questions around, you know, even the basic things. Um, I think, you know, just start by answering, of course, that all important question. Tomorrow is the 1st of September. A lot of people saying, should I go for my emergency savings? So, Unati, I think the answer to that question is twofold. Mm -hmm. uh, our viewers need to remember that your retirement savings is ultimately intended for the day you retire and the more money you have saved up, the more comfortable you will be able to retire. Mm -hmm. National Treasury said that allowing a withdrawal from the savings pot should not be seen as a windfall or a type of a bonus you pay to yourself. It is there for fin emergencies, or if you are enduring financial distress, then you can make a withdrawal from the emergency savings spot. Uh, we strongly encourage our members not to make uh, withdrawals <laughs> from the savings spot for any other reason other than an emergency or financial distress. Mm. And I mean, uh, another part of her question, of course, was um, the makeup of uh, the two part system. Of course, uh, talking about the, t uh, the three parts there, of course, you have your vested part, your savings and your retirement part. Just explain briefly those uh, th that um, system and what it actually entails, because I think a lot of it also goes around what is the current you know, system look like now versus what the two part system is actually bringing. Okay. All right, so Unati, if you can imagine for me in your mind's eye, three pots. Mm. The first one is the vested pot, or we call it the vested pot. The second one is the savings pot, and the third one is the retirement pot. We all currently, for those of our, us who are in employment, have current retirement savings. The current retirement savings will be parked in that vested pot and it will grow with investment return until it is withdrawn. There the picture comes up. So all your retirement savings you have until now is in that first pot, the vested pot. 
from September onwards, you will start making contributions to your savings pot, a third, and that's the first new pot. And then two thirds of your contributions will go into the retirement pot. Hence, we call it the two pot system, referring to the two new pots, the savings pot and the retirement pot. The vested pot is just another name of conveniently referring to our retirement savings up to now. All right, uh, Johan, thanks for that. Let's listen to then our second question. My name is Novola Tamini, employed at SIU, and I've got three beautiful questions for you to assist me with, just to make up my mind. The first question is about the two-port uh, system. Is the two-port system beneficial for employees, or will it be uh, benefiting the government in terms of the tax as it's so much? The second question is, is it advisable for me to take the two-pot system on my pensions or to take it on my private entities, old mutual and so forth entities? Number three, I just want you to understand um, with the two-pot system, will it be beneficial for me to withdraw my monies from all the entities, from my pension fund, my GEPF, or from uh, even old mutual even my um, momentum everywhere where I have retirement annuities, is it advisable for me to withdraw all at once? Thank you for listening and thank you for your advices. Yeah, and I think that first part of her question, of course, a lot of people saying, who does this benefit more myself uh, from an emergency perspective or the government of course we heard that SARS uh, can also will also be benefiting to the tune of about five billion rand but I want us to actually concentrate on um, just uh, a part of uh, her question particularly where she is saying where should she should be withdrawing her money I think that also there's still a lot of confusion here in terms of where your inv investments are lying Firstly, I'm very glad to hear that that viewer is saving so much for retirement. If she's got <laughs> multiple retirement plans, then she's one of those lucky people that will retire comfortably one day. So um, what I strongly recommend where you have multiple retirement savings is to consult with a financial advisor yeah. to make the correct decision. But if for the purposes of this interview, I can perhaps give two pointers if it was me that I had to make a withdrawal from or could make a withdrawal from a couple of retirement funds or retirement annuities, I would look at things like what is the fee they're going to charge me for making withdrawal on each plan. And of course, if you're going to make a withdrawal, then you're no longer going to earn investment return on that withdrawal. So I would probably then also consider the uh, the, 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 the product with the lowest investment return. Mm. But as I say again, it's important to consult your financial advisor. I'm not a financial advisor, so if you've got multiple plans, please take that step and talk to someone who's in the know with regards to financial products. Absolutely, and I think the financial advisor will also be able to tell them that they don't necessarily have to make that decision tomorrow, and also there are tax implications. Let's quickly listen to the third question and final question, Johan. Hi there, my name is Sandy Ledube from the Department of Agriculture. I'm the Secretary of NEAO there. Uh, my basic questions are basically at family level. We know that there are people in their families who are undergoing divorces or planning to go through a divorce. So the question is, we know that there's a benefit from a 50% benefit that is due to your spouse. So what will happen to a, a person that is planning for such? So how do you go about, can one spouse go and apply in court for an interdict, send it to uh, the pension funds so that you hold one partner from taking uh, this uh, uh, 30,000? Perhaps the second question would be also related to that. There are maintenance orders that are there that are deducting directly from our salaries through our pay slips. We see the balance. So what will happen? Because we've heard that um, if you own SARS, you will be deducted first the money for SARS. Suppose child maintenance I'm owing, will it be deducted off this 30,000 that I'm about to take? 
an important one that, you know, how the two-part uh, system affects payments of benefits to surviving spouses or dependents after death. Yes, but notice so perhaps just quickly on divorce and maintenance orders. Yeah. So my advice to the viewers is this, that if you are going through divorce proceedings or maintenance order proceedings and you want to claim from your former spouse's pension, you need to register those uh, proceedings with the retirement fund to which they belong. In the case of a divorce, for example, uh, you must then consent before your former spouse can make a withdrawal from the saving spot. So it's very important to register your divorce proceedings yeah. in time to, uh, to enforce the consent. As to the question around death benefits, the two-part system doesn't change anything as it currently works. So you must still nominate beneficiaries yeah. and the trustees of the particular retirement fund you belong to are responsible to, um, to, to, to allocate your death benefits and your retirement benefits to your dependents and that will still stay the same. The two-part doesn't change any of that. Johan, thank you so much for your, your answers, of course. I think a lot of our viewers really appreciate it. Johan Prinsloo is from Sunlam, just unpacking the two-part retirement system that kicks off tomorrow.